Hi, this is Shadi. Today we're going to be talking about old school karate. So this is a production from the 1950s. You can find it on Hal Sharp's channel. May he rest in peace. He has a great collection of so many old school footage that I myself use all the time. So you're going to see here just how elegant. I don't know today the state of karate. I'm not a karateka myself, but just to see something that's so elegant, so elite, and just so beautiful to watch. And you can see someone has a lot of good foundation in their movement, a strong core, and also the self-defense aspect that is mostly gone in so many uh, martial arts. And we're going to see all of this. But of course, before we do that, please don't forget to check out my book, The Origins and History of Judo. It is a translation from a manuscript from 1903, available in French, English, and both bilingual with modern uh, Japanese. And to everyone who already got it, thank you. So first, let's take a look at some basic strikes. And you can see they have their way of doing it. The whole body just goes in for the strike. The quickness, the smoothness, and the softness in uh, doing it, of course, that softness there's a lot of hardcore training behind it, as you see here. Now, this part, they compare it with boxing just to see the difference in the movement. And you can just see how elegant it all is, boxing and karate. So look at his hips, look at the core, how it is so stable and strong as he kicks and moves. This requires a very strong core. And even for judo and jiu-jitsu, you need a strong core because... A lot of your back pain, believe it or not, comes from a very weak core and pelvic muscles. And here you can see just the snap, the elegance, and both of them even uh, a bit of sparring. Look at the legs and how they move, how stable he is. And here you can see the difference in the movement and how they move. And you can see why karate 70, 80 years ago used to have this great uh, reputation and here you can see uh, female self-defense, a very fundamental but very efficient striking where it counts. And also the basic movement on how to use leverage to untie a particular uh, grip or forceful grip. Now, this is very reminiscent of the female self-defense kata in judo. I believe they stopped using it around the end of the Second World War, if I'm not mistaken. But you can see it's how to use leverage, how to get yourself out of annoying grips, forceful grips, uh, basic strikes where it counts on the ear, on the solar plexus, etc. The chin, all of it, not much of big movements, but it's just basic self-defense and basic scenarios that can help you quite a bit. So here you see attacks from behind. Uh, someone trying to grip you from the side, etc. Bear hugs, of course. Uh, a kidnapper's first uh, approach, I would say. So here you have your purse or anything, and someone is doing that. So you give it to them, basically nullifying one arm, so you can go and attack. So it's very uh, fundamental, but yet it has a lot of things to teach us. Here, weighted. Uh, tools to help with the striking so either the kicks they have weighted ankles for example today here you are holding these with a lot of weights so it's giving you a lot of strength and smoothness in the things that you are mostly used to doing and have the habit of doing constantly much like swimmers with their uh, belts that is attached so it gives a lot of resistance while performing all the movements that they usually uh, do. Same with the football players. They wrap their waist and they jump high, etc. And now here, let's take a look at some takedowns. Seoi Otoshi, let's see it again. Drops down and just shops the hands. And very similar to the fundamentals of Seoi Otoshi, and you don't lift on the hips, you just drop down and cut down with your hands. There's a variety of ways to cut down with the hands. It can be sleeve lapel, one sleeve, one arm, 
uh, pushing on the inside of the elbow like we saw here and here you can see a lot of uh, small foot reaps etc and uh, wrist locks here just classical uh, kata guruma you can see the strike itself is the factor that unbalances and puts them in that deer and headlight uh, moment and you can see just lift using the sleeve getting close uh, putting the back of the neck on the belt level so you can control the hips go up and put them down or sorry dump them down it's one of my favorite throws and uh, it can be very devastating and it's just incredibly aesthetic at the same time so now these uh, kata for self-defense in everyday life people seated uh, very uh, indicative of the culture of course and you can see that all the directions of attack are uh, mentioned or used in order for you to uh, defend against them and you can see there's the arms you can kick you can strike uh, you can see it's a lot of the uh, effective uh, things and also keep in mind the more you do these the more you are fluent with them and the more you are effective of course do it slow do it good and then do it beautifully as katanishi sensei says here you can see people sitting in chairs and you just get uh, attacked basically someone's trying to sucker punch you or trying to attack you from a blind spot and here but of course you have to do them relentlessly and regularly in order to be good at them now again this is very reminiscent of uh, old school judo self-defense the kime no kata you can see you have kneeling down and of course even standing and with weapons this is from the 1880s so self-defense was very big and this is something that of course we all miss we all want to see the sports aspect develop we want to watch good competition good epons etc but at the same time it shouldn't be at the cost of something like this which is the the biggest i would say the second biggest goal in judo which is self-defense so as kano sensei said the goal is to create a better society and to defend defense against attacks it's not about winning the olympics or world championship although this is quite nice but we have discarded the two most important things for uh, sports medals which is very unfortunate and as you can see here they had a lot in common both karate and judo i don't know the history of the two and how they blended uh, okinawa with mainland japan etc uh, this is a long study and i'm not going to comment on it since i'm not educated so if you have anything to add please let me know down below please don't forget to check out the book and my patreon this was Shadi and thank you for listening.